Hey, Pete Koch here, breaking it down with friend Elizabeth Greer, and she is one heck of an actress and an interesting person. I'm getting ahead because I, the work that you've done, and we can, we, and I neglected to talk about this at the beginning. Most recently, you've worked on, the, appeared as a as a, a co-star and a guest star in, in shows like Ray Donovan, Bates Motel, West Wing, The Shield, Charm, just goes on and on. Uh, countless um, web series. That, in, in fact, uh, we got to work I together. Had a chance to work together. On a wonderful but, web series called The Reveal. The Reveal, and we'll shout out to John. I'm John thinking Lacey, of John Lacey, writer director John Lacey, <laughs> who, who, as a director, likes to likes to reinforce our, the confidence, in a sense, with it with his actors, and say, "Remember, it's right in here. It's That's all right. in here, and That's it's all right. in the eyes." That's right. But it, when you're on stage and there's twelve thousand in the audience, it's not correct here anymore. It's head to toe. Right. Right. Was there a point where you needed to? decide if you wanted to be a stage actor versus really trying to make your mark as a film and television actor? That's such a good question. Um, when I first came out here, I, w I was still doing a lot of theater. Uh, I was a member of two theater companies, uh, which I still am a member of, um, Ensemble Studio Theater LA. There's also an ensemble, an ensemble Studio Theater in New York, uh, and I was involved with them in New York. And then the Open Fist Theater Company, and that's where I met John Lacey and many of his pals, Kevin McCorkle. That's where I met all those guys through the Open Fist Theater Company. So I was doing quite a bit of theater in L.A. I think the problem is that, um, you know, casting directors uh, used to really frequent plays in Los Angeles. And of course, that used to be the way to get discovered in New York, and still can be. If you're in a really fine theater production, somebody is going to notice in New York and you're going to start getting called in for television and film auditions. It really used to be that way out here too. I think with media and the way things have changed, um, a lot of casting directors and agents and managers like to see people's clips and people's reels. And it's easier for them. It's easier for them than, say, driving all the way down to the taper to see something and sit through it for two or three hours. They just see somebody's clip from a show or a film, and then they decide whether or not they're bringing them in or whether or not they want to work with them. So uh, things have definitely changed, and I've put my focus because of that more on film and television because uh, even though I miss being on stage so much and really hope to get back there soon, okay. it's really a time thing now. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of actors find that that um, they, they may not have the, all those hours to put into stage work while they're pursuing film and television jobs. Do you think that the theater scene is, uh, has suffered because, because of the changes? Because now, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. 15 years ago, uh, actor friends of mine were, were putting up Investing their own money to do a play sure. and just give it, just run it for a month and rent out a theater. It's expensive, right. but they just wanted to get seen. Now people do web series. That's exactly right to get seen. I still think that one of the best ways to become a better actor is to be in a stage play with people that know what they're doing. I mean, good work is good work. If you're doing amazing work in a web series, amazing work in a stage play, you can. Being a better actor is only a good thing. And it will lead to something. Wherever you can do great work in a commercial audition, in Hamlet, in a web series, doing great acting, somebody will notice somewhere. But you have to, it's, a, it's definitely a time management thing. And I think you're right. I think the theater scene might have suffered a bit because I think some of those groups of actors that would put their money in and get behind a play, get the royalties, might now pursue that in, in a web series instead. So that's really, it's a changing landscape. It'll be very interesting to see where all that is in the next couple of years, won't it? It will. I. I don't know if you if you can uh, put that toothpaste back in the tube when it comes to plays uh, sure. going away sure. to a sure. certain degree. Um, there's all, I think at the highest level, like Broadway, that they're, they're not going anywhere in these great traveling uh, pr productions. But I don't think young actors are oriented that way so much because they've probably got somebody that's got a camera and they say, "Let's set that thing that's up right. and, and trade." But 
I, but that's not at all a criticism, right? Because no, not at all. And there are theater companies doing very important work out here all the time. For example, I just saw a wonderful show called Watching O.J. about O.J. Simpson at my theater company, Ensemble Studio oh. Theater. It was fabulous. It was a very controversial play about race. Um, I think every actor who acts in television and film here has to still support Los Angeles theater. I think it's really important. If the, you're friends with a certain writer or director or a theater company that you believe in, you should go and traffic those places um, because it would be terrifying to see the live arts die. We still need the live arts no matter what. So again, I think it's a fine balance of figuring out, it's a time management thing all around. But we don't want more theaters in Los Angeles to close. Good point. Go back to the training just a little bit because I know people care. I'm a book person and I, I know there's a lot of... In yeah, everybody wants to go to default to... Uh, to a website to, to get gain their information, right. but but for uh, actors that are serious about their training, yeah. the, a book that you would recommend sure. to folks out there? Sure. Um, well, my master teacher, who is no longer with us from the Yale School of Drama, his name is Earl Gister, and after he passed away, a book was put together of his technique. It's called The Gister Method. I really, really love that book. And then Stella Adler has several books. Mm -hmm. um, I believe her book is called On Acting by Stella Adler. Yes, I've got it right over there. That's right. Good one, yeah. I mean, you cannot go wrong with either of those books, um, and both those techniques are sort of very common. Congress. They're all about um, finding out what what the writer meant to say. You know what the genre is, right? Uh, uh, all, it, that's that's perfectly congruous with shows, isn't it? Be it that you're trying to figure out the difference between Mammoth and Shakespeare, you might need to find out the difference between a lifetime television movie and a soap. You know, it's all about scripts and storytelling. That's what. That's why I think theater training is wonderful for getting back to that. What is the story you're telling? What's the style? What's the genre? What did the writer mean to say? How does your character fit into that story that's trying to be told? Tell us a little bit about your acting coaching now. I know your yeah. passion is working with young people. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, I'm an acting coach seven days a week as well as a working actress. I absolutely love working with actors. Um, I tend to work with a lot of young actors, a lot of actors, child actors through, say, uh, early 20s. Um, my website is elizabethgreer.com, elizabethgreer.com, and there is a link there and you can read all of my testimonials. Uh, I have a lot of kids working on television shows. I have a lot of kids who I coach to get into these theater schools. Through monologues. Through monologues. And, and I'm such a fan of mastering the monologue, especially if you're just starting out in the business. You must have monologues, especially if you don't have a reel. You've got to go into an agent's office and be able to perform something. Need something. That's right. To show. That's right. And at. people can also write me on Twitter, at MC Lizzie G. That's capital M, capital C, Lizzie, L-I-Z-Z-Y-G. Uh, so either place, you can find me for coaching. Excellent. I want to wrap it up this way and pick your brain a little yeah, bit. Yeah, please. Favorite actress? Oh my goodness. There's so, you know, there's so many. There's a lot. God, there's so many. How about one? Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to have to pick a lot of Yale Drama School women because there Wouldn't are you know so it? many. A bulldog. There are so many. So <laughs> my favorites from Yale School of Drama, I would have to say, are, of course, Meryl Streep. We've got uh, Fran McDormand, who's incredible. Um, we've got Angela Bassett. Uh, Patricia Clarkson. I would say those are some of my very favorites. It's a heck of a start. It's yeah. a he he heck of a start, right? Uh, favorite actor. Mm. I, I, I've, I, I really, Philip Seymour Hoffman's death was yeah. so upsetting to me. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. And of course that's from NYU Tisch. Um, yeah, God. that's, that's, that, that, it breaks your heart. It it's does. still, right? It does. It but still he was, does. He was a special talent. He really was. Yeah. I'd say he's one of my favorite actors of all time. What's a film that resonates with you that you can watch over and over and still just say, yeah? Well, I have to say I've always been a huge fan of Martin Scorsese. Um, there, uh, When I first saw Taxi Driver, mm. that changed my life. Mm. I felt like the I wanted to be part of filmmaking when I saw a Taxi Driver. Um, it's saying a lot. It, it, it's yeah. really saying a lot. And then I would say um, Raging Bull and King of Comedy. Um, those are my three favorite Martin Scorsese movies, and I think that each is a masterpiece. 
How about a favorite play? Oh my goodness. Um, You've only been in you? 70. <laughs> Where do, where do we right exactly? Where do we even too many begin? choices. For yeah, there's too many choices. Um, I don't even go by favorite plays. I go by favorite playwrights. I, and that was my next question. So you can yeah, just do that. Yeah. What do you like? Um, I've always been obsessed with uh, two people who are often compared to each other: David Mamet and Neil Labute. Uh, they're both genius playwrights, highly awarded playwrights. Um, yeah. I, I've acted in many of both of their work, so if you are a young actor and you're starting out, you must be familiar with the work of David Mamet and Neil Labute. Um, Shakespeare never gets old. I mean, a Shakespeare play can always be reinvented in a way that can be telling to our time and tell us something. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't wisdom. even know where to begin. Uh, Chekhov, Strindberg, uh, Beckett, um, <laughs> goes on and on. Yeah. Lots of choices, all the classics. O'Neill, Tennessee yeah. Williams. Um, you know, those are those are the masters that are are life changing for an artist. That's a lot. That's a lot of uh, good and pa impassioned uh, information to share with our yeah. audience. Your training and your background and your commitment is extraordinary. It's, it's, it sets an example and a, and a bar at the highest level for what folks should aspire to that really care about the, the acting business, about show business. Folks, you just don't come out here and stumble into the game and, and, and get to work on the shows and the productions that Elizabeth Greer has done in her career. I just want to thank her for the time that she is. It's been uh, so fun to be on the show. Just remember that I have a double degree in make believe. <laughs> 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 and that's actually sometimes what I think about when I go all the way back to this. All these playwrights, all these films. It, it, it really is literally make-believe. It's so interesting when you think about it that way. It's not that it's, you know, some medical plan layout. I mean, these are, the, it's stories. It's storytelling. It's just make-believe. Isn't that fascinating when you think about it that way? So it's, stor but it's storytelling at, at the highest level using, uh, but, but you, and you're, you're, so, you're modest, but using all, all the techniques that you've cultivated and using this, your great imagination, but real legitimate techniques so that you can ground that character correct right exactly Gotta have something to grab grab onto that's right it's always about what you want in the scene and what the writer tried to say by having your character want that that thing that's that's just the beginning of how i look at things it's great i appreciate so much your time it's Elizabeth been so Greer. fun i love pete Koch. we were so lucky to work together yeah. this is pete Koch breaking it down we'll see you next time awesome